Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chapter 2 Club, Smart Woman's Guide to Breakups and Everything After. Today, I'm here with clinical psychologist Dr. Lynn Saladino, and we're going to be talking about cohabitating during a breakup. Hi, Lynn. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. So, cohabitating during a breakup. Women, sometimes when they get separated or divorced, they can't move out right away, or the ex can't move out, and so they have to stay in the same house and deal with living together, even though they are trying to break up or broken up. So how can we help our viewers out there with the situation? Absolutely. Well, I think this is one of the more challenging pieces of, of a breakup, and yeah. it's coming up so much um i think because circumstances um you know may lead to them not having the finances to move out or you know maybe if it is uh still during the pandemic we uh we may need to be caring for children together uh right. so there's a lot of things that are coming up that are leading to this and um boy is it challenging <laughs> for people yeah. i've been hearing that a lot so yeah. especially during the pandemic i can imagine yeah. So what are some ways that women can cope with, you know, having to live in the same house with their ex or soon to be ex? Sure. Well, the first thing I would think about is um, really trying, if you can, to lay out um, which boundaries, which rules you want to be living by in the home. Um, okay. While, you know, while there are... Uh, uh, there may be some challenges of getting people to stick to those. I think a lot of times when you're with a person that you've been with in a relationship a long time, right. there are some assumptions that it's like, oh, we'll be fine. We'll do this. We'll do that. Right. Um, and, and I think that you may be able to save yourself some grief by having a conversation. You may even say, okay, this is the time I want to use the kitchen. This is the time, you know, depending on your home situation. Yeah. You know, what do you need? What are the rules about guests? What are the rules going to be in terms of, you know, whatever it is that's going to make you feel safe? Um, yeah. Well, you know, that would be the first thing for me would be, you know, even if you feel like you guys are going to be just fine, maybe yeah. sit down and say, let's, let's talk this out so we can be respectful of each other and, right. you know, share the space in a way that feels good to both people. Yeah. I like that tip. I, I, then I also think about women that aren't able to, have those conversations with their soon to be exes or who, who are not going to kind of, you know, cohabitate nicely with them. So then what, what should they do? <laughs> That's a hard one. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. I mean, if you have trouble with um, speaking again, sometimes these are either been the reasons why you guys are not working out right. again, either someone is not respecting those boundaries that you set right. uh, or, you know, these conversations have been challenging. I would say, even if that is the case, start to notice and maybe write the stuff down. Say, okay, what are the things that I can do that are going to make this flow a little bit easier for me? Yeah. Um, if you can get that, you know, sometimes you can write your partner an email, um, or sometimes you can just know it for yourself if you feel like you really can have that discussion. Um, it can be kind of tempting to kind of force the issue a little bit and say, well, I deserve this. I am. 100% behind you probably do, but yeah. I think remembering that this is about cohabitating and not necessarily about fighting every battle that you had in the relationship. We just want your day to day to feel as, um, with as much ease, I will say, as possible, yeah. even if it doesn't feel easy. Yeah, that's a good tip too, just to kind of refocus and remember that it's just about living together and figuring out those boundaries and rules and not, you know, dealing with the other stuff until you can do that later on. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I find that even before the pandemic, I mean, I, I know that people still have to, you know, cohabitate mm -hmm. and they can't do anything about it. Um, but really figuring out what works for you and hoping that the other person agrees. And then if they don't, just making sure you can stick by your own boundaries and rules for yourself, right? Because we want to protect ourselves um, and validate, you know, those feelings that we have about ourselves and situation. Right. Absolutely. 
Yeah, and I think this is a time also where, and again, it's so hard because we're like, I'm leaving, and then you can't right. go anywhere. Um, and yeah. it's, it's so difficult. But I think knowing and reminding yourself, if you need to, remind yourself why you are still cohabitating. Because um, sometimes we've made this decision and then it feels almost like we're doing something wrong because we're still in the same space. Right. And there's a lot of reasons why you may have to put that off. So, yeah. you know, you have to go back to the reasons why you're there. It's not actually that you're necessarily extending the relationship. It's more right. that this is, you know, some set of circumstances that is going to do that. So it may take a little bit off of you to say, oh, like, I can't believe I'm still doing this. It's like, well, right. you're not. You just have to do this part for a little while longer. Yeah. And then I guess there's also two different mindsets, too. One would be someone whose spouse is wanting out versus mm -hmm. you make initiating it. So I'm, I'm thinking the emotional state is different from those two situations. Sure, yeah, it really depends. I, you know, some people are trying to hold on and some people are really ready to let go. Right. And those, those two things can be very, very tricky. And that's where I think coming back to yourself and evaluating and knowing where you're at, I think will help you to know what's best for you. Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much. That was a very helpful and useful for our viewers out there. And we appreciate our viewers listening in. And if you want to find out more information or sign up for one of our workshops, check us out at chapter2club.com. And Dr. Saladino, thank you so much for being here with us today. And we appreciate you coming out. Absolutely. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.